Yes, you can. Yeah, let's do yes, you can, too. Start off on the, it's a and then E, D, F, E, D, A, yeah, that's it. Two. Sometimes I wonder, is he faithful? Does he see me in my trouble? with that one. I know we didn't get a chance last week to do too much. No, no, that, that one's easy. Yeah, oh yeah. Tell me when, everybody. Gong. Or one of those things that comes up beforehand. Gong. Tell me. Ready? Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We here at Covenant are connecting people in this hectic world to Jesus, and we are thankful that you have joined us in worship this morning. 
either here in person, it's great to see so many on the last Sunday of July, or via Facebook Live or later on YouTube Live. Thank you for joining us. If you're looking for a church home, a virtual church home, we hope that you will consider Covenant Presbyterian Church. There are just a couple of announcements that I'd like to highlight. We're still looking for a couple more food items to, uh, for this Tuesday night at the Ferlazzo building for the unhoused, um, those who do not have homes. There are about 50 people we serve. Actually, they serve themselves. We don't go in because of COVID. So you'll see the link. We're looking for some more cookies. We're looking for salad and salad dressing or Jane Greenwood is coming in the door right now. She doesn't know I'm talking about her, but you can see her right following the service, all right? The other announcement is that there will be a financial town hall meeting next Sunday following worship, just to fill you in on where Covenant's finances are. We were remiss in doing that in um, June, and we're doing it in August, so that will be next Sunday. You'll also see there's a kind of a minor change in a, where people will be staying for the national mission trip, and you can see that in your bulletin. Those are all the announcements I'd like to highlight this morning. The Lord be with you. Would you join with me in the call to worship? And if you are able, will you stand? Let us worship a God of surprises. Too often we are told that winning is everything. Here in this place, we glimpse God's reality that we must lose in order to gain. Too often we believe that freedom means autonomy, that we are in charge of our own lives. Here we learn again that true freedom comes from God. We are free when we follow Christ and obey God's commandments. Too often we are told that we are what we have, that wealth reigns and power rules. Here we remind one another of God's good news. The stone that was rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Let us worship a God of surprises. Let us prepare our hearts to hear God's startling good news once again. You 
our sins to God. So would you join with me in the prayer of confession, first together, then silently. Let us pray. Holy God, we do live in the joy and wonder of your love. However, we find it so easy to be in disagreements. We take each other so much for granted. Often we are tempted to cut the ropes of love that bind us together. We very quickly move to violence and distrust and finally hatred toward those with whom we have a difference of opinion or those who hold different values and traditions. Other times we take life and each other way too much for granted. Help us now, Lord, in this time of worship to renew our faith in you and restore our love to each other with powerful cords of compassion and mercy through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. Dear friends, who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is past and gone, and the new has come. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. I won't 
didn't know the Summer Olympics began this past week in Tokyo, Japan. It is one of my favorite things to watch on television. I was almost late this morning because I was watching, watching an American 18-year-old woman be the first to win an Olympic gold in Taekwondo, which I do not understand at all. They just seem to be kicking their legs up a lot, but it was good. It was exciting. They were very excited about it. Um, and also, did you all see Tunisia, the guy from Tunisia win last night, the swimmer? He didn't even think he was going to get in the semifinals, and then he won it all. Fifth gold win medal, 18-year-old. I mean, these are, all, these are all young adults. Let me just put it that way. Kids. And um, oh, I was just exciting. Very exciting. So, amazing athletes competing. I googled what an Olympic swimmer's daily exercise routine is, and this is British swimmer Max Litchfield's schedule. You guys ready? <laughs> 6.20, wake up. 6.30, breakfast. 7.15 to 7.45, pre-pool warm-up. 7.45 to 10 a.m., morning swim. 10 to 10.15, snack. 10.15 to 11.45, gym session. 11.45 to 12.30, lunch. 12.30 to 2.30, mine would be 12.30 till the next day, nap or rest, all right? 2.30, snack. 3.15 to 4 p.m., pre-pool warm-up. 4 to 6 p.m., evening swim session. 7 p.m., dinner. 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, sleep. So Litchfield's life and diet all center on swimming and winning an Olympic 
medal. It is his goal. Last week in our series on the Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippian church, Knox preached on Christ embracing us because what Christ has done for us, not because of what we have done for Christ. Now we come to a passage where Paul used imagery of an athlete and the church also being a colony of heaven here on earth. So let's look at the text. You all are going to know a lot of this passage, I know. Um, Philippians 3, for starting at verse 12 and then going through chapter 4, verse 1. Let's look at the text. Paul writes, Not that I have already obtained this, or have already reached the goal. What's the goal here? The goal being the resurrection of the dead and experiencing Christ's resurrection power. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. So just as an athlete works hard to accomplish his or her goal, so the Christian works hard until the day of Christ, verse 14. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Well, what does that mean? It's beautiful language, but what does it mean? It is the resurrection. The prize is the resurrection life itself. It means living in the present in the light of that future. We're going to come back to this. Verse 15. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. True Christian maturity, friends, means knowing that you have not arrived. You never arrive. And you must still keep pressing on forwards toward the goal of experiencing Christ's resurrection power. Verse 17. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. So Paul is warning the Philippian church against pagan behavior. Now, before we get to verses 20 and 21, and actually 4.1, I want to give you a little context here, all right? Um, Courtesy of N.T. Wright, my guy N.T. Wright. The town of Philippi was a Roman colony. All right, in 42 BC, there was a Roman civil war following the death of Julius Caesar. Two victorious generals, Antony and Octavian, found themselves with a lot of soldiers in northern Greece. And they they didn't want to take them all back to Rome or to Italy. I think it was a financial consideration, but who knows? So what they did was they gave the soldiers land in and around Philippi and soon other veterans settled in that area. Now, as is anything, there were those who benefited from the Roman presence and those who did not. The ones who didn't resented this alien Latin-speaking elite overtaking their Greek town. Many of the Philippian colonists were proud of being Romans and did their best things to do did their best to do things the way that things were done in Rome, okay? Paul knew this. Now we're going to go on to verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven, okay? So see what Paul was doing? Perhaps some in his Philippian church were Roman citizens, and perhaps a majority were not. But it did not matter what your citizenship was because a Christian citizenship is in heaven, meaning our citizenship is with God's kingdom. What do we say every Sunday in the prayer, Lord's Prayer? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Just like the Philippian Roman colonists emulated Rome's culture, so Christians were to emulate Christ's kingdom here on earth. The rest of verse 20. 
And it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in Philippi, let's say there was a rebellion or the barbarians came from the north. Who would they call on? They would call on the Caesar at the time, who was Lord of the Roman world, to come and rescue them from being attacked. So we know that our Lord, Jesus Christ, will eventually come and rescue all of us. See how he plays on the, that Roman imagery. Verse 21, he will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. So Christ, we know this, you know, he will come again to judge the quick and the dead. Christ is going to transform the entire earth. And I often think about this with all of the awful things going on in the world. Christ will transform the entire world so that it is full of his glory, full of the life and power of heaven. And likewise, he is going to transform our broken bodies, that age, we know this, so that they will be like his glorious resurrected body. And our resurrected bodies will be um, bodies that death and decay will never be able to touch again. I don't know how, but it's going to happen. All right? Verse, chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. So knowing all of this that's going to happen, we can stand firm in the Lord. Ah, that's such a great passage. And I learned a lot this week. Okay, practical applications. Number one, keep running the race of the heavenly calling. You knew that was what it was going to be. Paul wrote in verse 14, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of Christ Jesus. The story is told of several families at the beach, and the adults were enjoying the sunset, but you know the kids, they were ready to go. And so to keep them occupied and to tire them out, one of the dads started relay races on the beach, all right? And the youngest of the children, a two-year-old, got a head start, and he took off all his might toward the water, and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa! This way, head down this way. You know, kids just start running. And so the adults had directed him back on course, and he happily ran along. And they could tell he had no idea what a finish line even was, right? Didn't matter to him. Even when he reached the finish line, he kept on running. The finish was not his focus. The running was, and he was running with all his might. You know how two-year-olds, they can go fast, right? You, it can be kind of terrifying. And when his dad yelled, you're done, you finished the race, you can stop, the two-year-old heard his father's voice, and he automatically raised his hands in the air, celebrating the victory of running. God wants us to do the same thing. God wants us to run the course set before us. Now, not everyone is running the same course because your course will be different than my course because your life is different than mine. But we will run into the same things. First of all, there will be obstacles, all right? There will be obstacles. There will be mud pits where you fall and you fall on your face or running between cones in a zigzag formation or trying to climb a wall and you cannot do it alone and you need others to hoist you up by your behind to get you over it. Our races, friends, are never straight and we need maps. So what is our map? Scripture, that's a map. We need, um, we need guidance, the church and trusted Christian friends we need a team cheering us on. You know, that's one of the sad things about the Olympics, right? It's like, I mean, at the swim team, the other swimmers are yelling, but it's very quiet, very quiet. This is not true of the Christian race, okay? We have Christian, our church family, 
the communion of saints who have already gone beyond us, cheering us on. They're in the heavenly stands going, go, go, go. We will need motivation. The Holy Spirit gives us that resurrection power. We need all of these things to run that race. But beyond the help of scripture, the church, Christian friends, the Holy Spirit, there are other things in common. Let me say this to you. I'm saying this to you out in internet land too. The Christian race is, not, is run daily, not just on Sunday, all right? It is not run just on Sunday morning for an hour or when you have a chance to see the service on YouTube or Facebook Live. The Christian race is run daily. The Christian race involves prayer. Now, you might say to me, well, I'm not really getting out of my house that much these days because of the pandemic and variants, all of that stuff. I get it. It's kind of scary. But our races can be done from the comfort of our own homes, all right? Not sure how to run the race today? Pray. Pray for your family. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for this country. Pray for Christians being persecuted. Not sure how to run the race today? Give financially to covenant. Not sure how to run the race today? Be kind to the people who prepared your takeout meal, okay? Be kind to the grocery clerk. Or be kind, this is hard, even on people who are right on your tail while you are driving. We've seen that, right? You know what? Go to the right lane and then bless them, not curse them on their way. Bless them. They might be in a hurry for some reason. God only knows. Not my problem. All right? Not sure how to run the race. We have a couple of food items that we still need for feeding the unhoused on Tuesday. Maybe, friends, running the race for you today or tomorrow is praying for your coworker who drives you batty, all right? Or sending a card to someone in need. You see, running the race toward the prize of the heavenly call takes one step at a time, one day at a time. And all of us will have bad running days. That's just part of the race. So what do we do? We say, God, it was a bad day today. Help me tomorrow to do better. And we next day we pick up and we continue the race, continue to live our lives to the glory of God. Second practical application. When a Christian do as the Christians. Okay, I know that's not great, but you know where I'm going this. Like when in Rome, do as the Romans. So when a Christian do as the Christians. Okay. Like I said earlier, the goal of Roman citizens living in Roman colonies, such as Philippi, was to bring Roman culture and rule to the colonies. It was to expand the Roman influence wherever those citizens lived. As Paul told the members of the Philippian church, some who were probably Roman citizens, probably a majority were not, since a lot of them were slaves, our citizenship is in heaven. So just as the Romans brought culture and rule to those colonies, we as Christians need to bring the life and rule of heaven to bear on earth. And honestly, we don't do that very well, do we? I mean, I'm sorry. Many think that all Christians are interested in are bashing their Bibles over people's heads or judging others, or being narrow-minded hypocrites who don't believe in science, okay? I could go on, couldn't I? It's easy to get discouraged. Plus, you know, we're not the strongest people. We are weak, we are helpless, we, we need help. When a, how do we live? Do we live when a Christian do as the Christians? Yes, we do. Because to be a citizen of heaven is one thing to start with. To love others as God loves us. We all know it is easy 
to love certain people because they're lovable, right? It's easy. It's easy. I like you because you're likable. It's not easy to love unlovable people, people who are not nice, people who are actually rude. We all know these people. Actually, we don't know them because we don't want to know them. Isn't that even more the case? And who does God call us to love? Toward the end of a church service, the minister asked, how many of you have forgiven your enemies? And about 80% held up their hands. The minister then repeated his question and all responded this time except one small elderly lady. Mrs. Jones, are you not willing to forgive your enemies? I don't have any, she replied, sweet, smiling sweetly. Mrs. Jones, that's very unusual. How old are you? 98, she said. So the minister now seized on what he thought was a teaching opportunity. Here was a saint who had lived many years and was now testifying that she didn't have an enemy in the world. Clearly, the congregation could learn from her. So he said, oh, Mrs. Jones, would you please come down in front and tell us how a person can live to be 98 and not have an enemy in the world? And Mrs. Jones tottered down the aisle, faced the congregation, and the minister repeated the question, and he said, how do you do it? She said, easy. I outlived the beep. You can, you can put whatever you want in there. Outliving our enemies is not the same as loving our enemies. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, if you stay by the river long enough, your enemies shall all pass by. It's a great thing, but that is not what we're to do. Poet Yevgeny Yetushenko, he just died in 2017. And his autobiography tells how in Moscow in 1941, the streets were lined with people, mostly women, waiting for a great parade of German prisoners. And the atmosphere of hatred was palpable. Nearly every woman had lost a husband or a father or a brother or a son. And now was their chance to desecrate the symbols of those who had killed their men folk. And the Germans came into view, thin, unshaven, wearing dirty blood-stained bandages, hobbling on crutches or leaning on the shoulders of their comrades, and the streets became dead silent. And an old woman pushed through the crowd saying, let me through past the police cordon and taking something from her coat. She pushed it into the pocket of an exhausted soldier, a crust of black bread. And now suddenly from every side, women were running toward the soldiers, pushing into their hands bread, cigarettes, whatever they had, because the soldiers were no longer enemies. They were people. Our enemies, friends, are people. They are people who, believe it or not, are loved by God. If we can do just one thing, one thing, and begin to love the unlovable, we will show our true citizenship and help to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Let us pray. Oh God, Help us to run the race. And we also all know of one person whom we cannot stand. We might not know them personally, but we know them. So help us, God, to pray for that person, to love them, and to be guided by you through it all. For we ask it through your son name, son's name who taught us to love others. Amen. Would you stand and sing with me the first four verses of Guide My Feet?
state the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into the hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This is the time when we share joys or concerns that you would like. I have a couple. Um, first of all, Sissy Howell, uh, Sarah Parker's daughter, is going home on Thursday after an extended stay up next to Johns Hopkins. She was supposed to stay up there for 60 days following a bone marrow transplant. So that is great news. And the other news is that the Susan and Dave Estep, this is their last Sunday with us, they are moving to Dallas to be near grandchildren. Forget the children, it's the grandchildren, all right? Uh, and we will miss them, but God bless you. Uh, Susan has served as a LEARN elder, served very well, and Dave has participated in many of the mission trips. We are going to miss you, uh, but God bless you on your new journey. That's very exciting. Thank you. Mm. Well, Good, good. Come back. Yeah, that makes it easier. <laughs> yeah, but exciting for you all. Yeah. Wonderful. Do you have joys or concerns you would like to share this morning? Carrie, and then Crystal. Uh, this uh, Travel Mercies for us, we're going to be starting our two-week uh, Little Retreat, our fun. Mm. Travel Mercies for everybody. Yeah, we leave... Tuesday. Pray for us while we visit our families. <laughs> Travel mercies for the Cassidy's. Crystal. <gasps> Wonderful. Christina has a job at a legal at an attorney's office. That's wonderful news. Yay. Anyone else? Stuart. Ooh, this coming Friday or yesterday? Friday. Okay. Stuart and Ann celebrated 38 years of marital bliss. I don't know about that. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm not repeating that. <laughs> marital bliss, Stuart and Ann. Wonderful. Anyone else? Well, let us go to God in prayer. Oh God, we offer our thanks for the abundant life that is ours. We thank you for our church and for our church family. We thank you for those who gather here and for those who are unable to be with us for this time of worship. We thank you for calling us to community, just as you are in community as the Trinity. We give thanks this day for the good news of Sissy coming home. We pray for her continued recovery. We're thankful that Christine has a job at an attorney's office as she continues to reach adulthood. We thank you, God, for that. 
We thank you for Stuart and Anne and their 38 years of marriage and pray, oh God, that you will draw them closer to get together and draw them closer to you. We pray for all who are traveling this coming weeks, God, that you will protect everyone and watch over them. And we especially lift up today Susan and Dave Estef, thankful for their participation in our church in so many ways. And we pray, oh God, that you will bless them as they move to Texas, that you will help them find a worshiping community there and we ask, oh God, for blessings, especially on their grandchildren. Gracious God, we lift up our community to you. We pray for all who are affected by COVID and all those who are working for its eradication. We lift up to you all first responders and all of our armed service, as well as all veterans. We remember this day Christians who are persecuted for their faith. Today, we Pray for Christians in Iraq and Syria, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, and the Maldives. We pray for them as they experience oppression for calling you Lord. Oh God, help us rejoice in you, to give thanks each day for the small joys you give to us. May our lives be worthy of your calling and whatever we do, however we run our race, may it bring your kingdom closer here on earth. For we ask it in your son's name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You are invited to give either electronically or through the plate in back. Let's sing, stand and sing the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer of dedication. In response to your great love for us, gracious God, we joyfully and gratefully offer the fruits of our labor and our lives in these gifts. Bless and multiply them, we pray, that the transformative power of your love will be a reality in our neighborhood and community. Amen. Please remain standing for our closing hymn, This Is My Father's World. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the
verse from the, for the year 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 7. Dear friends, may the love of God surround you as you go out from this place and return to your daily life. May Jesus Christ always stand before you with an invitation to know him and to follow him. May the Spirit give you wisdom and grace for the journey and kindle your imagination. And may the love of this community be like a warm cloak to shield you from despair and keep you strong in hope. Amen. Have a great week.